Hello everyone. It's Jane from JD Papercrafts here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the UK. I thought I'd uh, come on today and show you uh, how to make one of these theatre cards. There's a lot of them around at the moment. Um, I got the idea and the basic idea of how to put it together from, I think her name was Nikki Nex. Um, but I've not used her measurements, I've, I've used my own measurements for this. And it opens up like that, which I think is really nice. And I'm going to use Pampered Pets for it. Uh, it's a lovely set, this. It's real fun. All you, what you start with is a sheet of A4 card. And if you cut that on the long side at five and three quarters and again at five and three quarters excuse me using my old trimmer on this i uh, recorded a video a few nights ago um, and my phone stopped recording halfway through so uh, I'm having to redo it and I'm away in uh, our caravan at the moment so I'm using uh, what I have here to, to refilm it. So on, once you've cut two pieces, both five and three quarter, you will have a piece like that left. Hang on to that, we need it later. And then turn this to the other side and cut at four and one eighth. I won't give you metric measurements on here. I'll try to put them onto my, my blog. Uh, the metric measurements work out quite differently. Um, you have to do quite a smaller card to get the numbers to work out nicely. So it would get too complicated if I try and tell you that here. So you now have four pieces the same size. Two of those pieces you then need to cut down to three and three quarters instead of four and one eighth, which gives you a piece like that and a piece like that. And hang on onto both pieces, you will need them. So three and three quarter for both of them. Okay. Uh, while we have the trimmer out, I will do the next stage. Actually, no, I won't. I'll do that in a, in a bit. I'll get the trim out again. Later. Right. For the front, you need a piece of paper, pattern paper, DSP, measuring four inches by five and five eighths of an inch. So the first thing you want to do is to attach that onto one of the larger pieces. So you have two large pieces, two smaller pieces. One, you want one of the large pieces for this. And make sure you, when you apply glue that you apply glue to the center, not just at the edges. And get that onto there. Now, I'm going to cut it using one of the stitched rectangles dies. I've got some other dies on there as well. Um, it's the fourth one in. Um, the other one I used for some was the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And it's the biggest one you would need if you're using that one. So you want to get that central, and oh, you have to excuse me going off the camera for a moment. I don't want to die cut on the table in case I shake the camera too much. Okay. I've got it just up to one side here. And you put that, you want to put it central, make sure it is pretty close to being central and straight, obviously. And you might need to run it through 
two or three times to get it to cut properly. Just because you're going through um, extra thickness because you've got the paper as well as the um, card stuff. So run that through, make sure it's cut through. Okay, now take the other large piece which is going to be your your back section match up your frame with it so make sure it's lined up along all the edges make sure it's straight there and what you're going to do is you're going to put glue on the back of this the piece you cut out and you're going to reinsert it in there and then take the frame away which will attach that in the right place so, put glue on there and show it again with glue on it this time. So you want make sure that's lined up and then just position that back in to there. And take that away. Now you've got the, the back set up. Okay, right, we'll move on to the sides and these are going to form the sides and, and the curtains, if you like. The wings, I suppose it would be, if it was a stage. So it's these pieces you're making. So you need to score it at the halfway mark and that is irrespective of what die you have used to cut the frame. You want a sc one score line to be central. The other score line needs to be approximately that width, so, which I think I know on mine, I can measure it on here, it's about seven eighths of an inch. So I, I'm going to score that one at seven eighths. If you've used different dies, um, you might want to alter that. You, you could use an oval or something like that if you wanted. It doesn't have to be a, a rectangle. Um, and if you haven't got any, any dies that will, will cut that out like that, uh, if you could do it just with your, your trimmer, um, as long as you're reasonably neat with, and accurate with how you do the corners, you could easily do that just with a trimmer. So I've scored that now 7 eighths and 2 and 7 eighths and I want to do exactly the same, that doesn't look straight to me, I'll just double check that I've done that straight and I haven't quite. I'm just going to straighten that up a little bit. So again, you want to cut, uh, score that at two and seven eighths. Get the cutter out of the way, and over here at seven eighths. So now you need some more DSP. The way this is going to go together, if you, you can fold and burnish those score lines. And then this will form the curtains, if you like. So the with the folds together, you want to put that's going to go together like that, and this bit will will be what shows up on the front here. So you want 
two pieces of paper, DSP, um, three and five eighths long, and two and three quarters wide. Now I think I've done mine so that they will match up. So when the curtains shut, that will be the th those words will connect. So if I do it that way round, that should work. those pieces of DSP on there. Like that. Uh, and for these pieces you want Three and five eighths tall, one and seven eighths wide. You could do different paper. Yeah, you could use three types of paper if you if you prefer. Um, I would say you want to look for papers that. Uh, a slight contrast to each other so that will work like that uh, if it was a very busy pa paper um, let's see if I can find another one of these this is the the pack of paper and if it was to find the one I'm thinking of, that one, it wouldn't work. That doesn't doesn't look right, but that looks quite good. Okay, so we can now attach these. You want to put glue on that section that has no paper on it, line it up with the edge here and make sure it's central, top to bottom. A bit of glue there. And line that up. Okay. Now if you put, you want to make sure you you're straight on that. But fold it down like that before you try to attach the other one. Because that way you can make sure that your curtains are going to meet. Right. That's not too bad. Okay. Now you have two pieces like that that we cut off earlier. You want to take those and place that centrally. So you've got about the same. It doesn't have to be accurate, but about the same there. You want to fold it over on one end and then on the other end what you're trying to do is to make sure that it's reasonably tight if you go too loose here and you fold it over it will be it will come apart too easily but if you go too tight I can show you on this one that one moves easily that one you see I'm having to push a bit to get that to go in. That one moves nicely. So that was about right. And if you can see on there, that's about how much movement, how much extra I've got there. That one 
you might be able to see that there isn't really enough extra there. So just move it slightly. Once you've folded one side over, move it slightly towards that side and then fold it over fairly tight. And that will give you the little bit of room you need. Okay. And on the just in case there's any difference in size on this, I'm just going to do the same thing here. Move it across ever so slightly and then you can fold it. Make sure you've folded it reasonably square. Okay. Now you take the frame and that side is the one that I want from there. You want to put glue on the two tabs. And then attach that uh, as cl fairly close to the edge of the frame. This edge of the frame, the in inner edge. And then the other one on the other side. Just going to move that slightly. You want to make sure it's not going to be seen from the other side still go fairly close. And obviously you also need to make sure that you're central between there and there. And now making sure that you get you've got the paper the right way up. I assembled one, one of the first ones I did, I assembled it with the paper upside down. <laughs> Had to take the decorations off to be able to uh, fix it. But hopefully if I make the mistakes you, you're less likely to. Okay, now the only issue with that now, oh there's another one. I do not forgot to do it. Need a small punch um, and you want to punch a thumb notch uh, on each side that's centrally. I always forget to do this bit. I'll leave that out for the moment. Quite enough glue on that bit. It's come slightly loose. It's probably because I'm not letting the glue set before I uh, move it. What we could do at this point actually is to decorate the inside. I've stamped that from the uh, Pamper Pet stamp set and I've cut some dogs out from the matching designer series paper. I fussy cut those and uh, fussy cutting isn't my forte so if I can do it, any, any of you can. They're, they're very easy to fussy cut these. I wouldn't use 
dimensionals on this part just because um, when you fold that back in you don't want a lot of height here it'll stop it folding properly That can go into there now. Should fit. And that side in there. Now what I found was that it was a bit inclined to do that if you don't do anything else to it. So that's why I said at the beginning to keep the little off cut off the bottom of your A4 paper. If you fold that in half and glue it and then fold it in half again, you'll get a extra thickness of card. Glue along there, fold that in half, fold it in half again, Ideally, let that set for a while, and then you can cut it into four sections. Now, if you line up the card so that the edge those two edges are lined up together. You've now got a space between the edge of the, the band that's holding it together and the edge of the card. And what you want to do is to put these and get the glue working. The glue on there and put that somewhere in between So I'll put it about there. Getting sticky fingers and they're sticking to me now. Also got a hair, a loose hair. <laughs> and the same the other side. Doesn't really matter where these go, it's only to stop it uh, coming apart. You don't want your recipient to have the card coming apart on them and then not knowing how to put it back together. almost it now. I've got a few of the, uh, the dogs that I've fussy cut. There is a die for that one, but not, really for, not for the others. And before you put them on, just check where they're going to go and to make sure that one's all right because it's quite thin. Make, just make sure that they you're not putting 
dimensionals on areas that are going to be over this bit. So that one's fine for them. You probably see what I mean when I get to the next one. So take the back things off those. One. Now this one needs a, bit, a little bit of checking because as you can see if I put a, a dimensional under on his nose it would attach to the curtains and not work. <laughs> as you put it down that the dimensionals attach in the right place. And again, just make sure you know where that's going to go. And that's your card finished. Hope you like it. Thanks for, for watching. Bye.